what's up everyone this is another episode of a slice of love and today is not just me i have three lovely guests and I, of course this is your host by the name of chris holmes and we're going to dive right into this with a slice of love but i'm gonna allow my guests to introduce themselves so go ahead and start it off hi i'm valerie johnson reed i'm laverne sampson who believes that black love still exists hey and we have, mm. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm Christopher Gordon, the other Chris. Yeah, Black <laughs> Love. I'm with that. I'm with yeah. that. Hey, hey, that's what it's all about. So we're gonna go ahead and start this off strong on a, I, I guess some people call it trendy, but let's go ahead and dive right in it. So, what do y'all think about the whole thing with Will and Jada and the whole entanglement? So this is a topic that everybody's talking about. Everybody has a different viewpoints, but I'm gonna just go ahead and get off the gas and the steering wheel and let y'all take y'all turns because <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all have our point of view. So whoever wants oh. to go, of course, we like to have the ladies go first. So go ahead and voice your opinion. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna we'll brief, re briefly. I'm just gonna say that um, the word entanglement, you know, has, is is trending now because it was used to describe an affair. And then basically, instead of saying it's an affair, it was an affair, it was another word to make it sound like it wasn't what it was, but it is what it is. It was an affair um, that happened between a older woman, mid-aged woman, 40-ish, um, with a young man that was in his 20s. So is it something new? No. Is the word entanglement something new that we're hearing now? Yes. But the concept is not new. So. That's my take on it. All right, all right, all right. It is what it is, nothing new under the sun. So go ahead and speak your uh, opinion as well. So I think, uh, like, as Val said, it's not new, but I think that as I thought about it even more, it w it's not just that, just a regular and fair, um, and fair. I think that it was complicated. Oh. I, guess that's, I guess that's why she said, I, I, I don't know. But I think as I look, just thought about it some more, it was more complicated than just your regular affair. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, Chris, let's see your take. I just thought it was a fancy way of describing cheese. Uh -huh. I think she used a whole bunch of nice words and all this, uh, like, all this emotionally charged language and very soft spoken language described how she was cheating. Uh huh. Gotcha, gotcha. I agree. Cool, cool. And I like, we all pretty much saying, like, um, this is nothing new on the sun. This has been going on for centuries and things like that. Yeah, but like with new age and technology and trendy turns and slang and much more, we're just putting like another, you know, bow on top of what it is. And then mm -hmm. like that. So when it really comes down to it, what is the value of relationships nowadays? Because I know, Valerie, we talked about this uh, previously in the last one, but do you feel okay. like the value of relationships of, and marriages are the same or has it changed? From my perspective, I, I think we have to go to the root. Um, number one, I think we have to look at the relationship. Is If we're talking about specifically that particular instance um the i think it, and i think in general we have to as people we have to define what our relationships are now as much as we don't like to we need to define our relationships you know when people to me when i when i was married when my husband was alive and i was married it was no doubt we were married it was understood that that's what it, it, it is you know that's what we were together we were married so all this outside of or having an open relationship that never came into play so i think now more than ever and i, and I know it's been happening in the world i know it's not new but now more than ever you hear more people being open open to certain things open to other people coming in and you know other things happening so i think i think it's probably it's been going on but i also think it's 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 become more popular just because other people do it people say oh well they're doing it 
well, we can do it too. And I think a lot of times people get caught up in the fact that um, you have to do what's best for you and your family. And is that the best thing for you and your family? Not necessarily, but I think a lot of times we get caught up and we think we want to try something different or add a little spice to it. And it ends up being something that's very detrimental to our relationship. All right, go ahead. So what do you have to say? Um, I agree with uh, Val about the, the defining. You have to define, number one, what is a relationship, and that's a whole other topic. Let's just stick. Mm-hmm. I, I'll try my best to stick to the narrative, but it's, it's, it's define what is a relationship now. Mm-hmm. Um, we And I think, a, for me, I, 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 I think that we, as we grow, and either, either, either in our process of growing, we're going to process of growing then our outlook on the relationship should change but when you foreplay of, of looking around okay everybody's doing it and i want to be in the in in crowd or i i just want to be in a relationship so i accept what what the society is saying because i don't want to be an outcast i really want want a relationship and i think that when you're in that situation then you're open to open relationship or poly relationships or or if your significant other cheat on you take them back over and over again like Betty Rice said having a piece of man is better than having no man at all so mm-hmm. I'm just gonna take what I got and work with it you know mm-hmm. and, and that's what we were told and so when you say now nah, I'm a little different than that then you you're the okay you become the mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. In the relationship. I mean, and like they all say, you have to decide what works best for you. But here's the deal. Do you know who you are? Mm-hmm. And do you know what you really want? So I want to add an additional question to that for you, and then we're going to get to you, Chris. Um, so what is, I like when it really comes down to it, so what defines that as if right or, right or wrong? Because based on, because some people use religious texts as, um, like the standard, and some people use like their own upbringing. So could that also be? Uh, is the religious text like universal, or is it gonna be like your uplifting? Because this is a like the this is a I think a clash that happens a lot of times when it does come to relationships. To thy own self be true. Going back to thy own self be true. It's not a. It's not. It's not just one thing that makes it correct. You know, I go back and say, you have to know what's you. If you are a religious person, then your base should be of religious. If you are a person who is spiritual, then your base should be spiritual. If you are a person who grew up and your family values were your cornerstone, then you stick to that. But when we leave leave our foundation or we don't have a foundation, then we're just like wandering, we're wandering. So I don't think it's a right or wrong way. I think it's just, you have to be able to, to define what it is for you. And it doesn't make you a bad person either way. If you're in a poly relationship, that doesn't make you a bad person. That's just the relationship you chose to be in. If you mm-hmm. decide to be in an open relationship, that's the relationship, but don't decide to be in those relationships if that's not where you want to be what you want to be for the sake of being in a relationship. Very good points. All right, Chris, you have the floor. Uh, I think back to your original question of as uh, relationships and marriage kind of gone down, was that, was that your original question that you, that you posed? Yeah, like uh, I would say that, I'd, say it again. I'm agreeing with you guys, the value of relationships and marriages, so keep going. Yeah, uh, the value of relationships and marriages, have they gone down? And I would say easily yes. Uh, And not just even in marriages, but I mean, the value of relationships have gone down. Like, uh, I mean, it's it's hard to find people that that have stayed married, stayed the course of marriage nowadays. But I could, I mean, that's easy to pick on married people. I can take it to single people. The number of people that are actually in real relationships have really gone down. 
to where you have people, uh, I, I read this thing the other day, it was like only in Houston, but it's not only in Houston, it happens all around. Can you talk on the phone with somebody, sleep at their house, uh, meet their parents, go to all the events and still say I'm single? Like, and it's crazy that you can do all these things with somebody and still consider yourself, oh, we're not in a relationship or, like I, I don't hear, I heard of her ladies, ladies especially, you know, use this language like, oh, we've been talking for for two years, talking for for, for two years, like, and and they just, we we don't want to put a label on it or, I mean, and I have to, that's one of the things that I have to get on, like especially like these young adults on, what are y'all doing? If and 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 they got all these words to describe it except a relationship. Like you can be everything to them except a boyfriend, and they can make all these promises in the world. To, you can be this. I can give you the moon, the stars. Okay, well, what can I be a girlfriend? No, nah, I'm not ready for that. And so, not only has marriage gone down, and but relationships have gone down. Single people barely are not even really in relationships anymore. And but it's easy to pick on married folk. But I, <laughs> yeah, the value of marriage has gone down too. Uh, Man, yeah, I think I think as a whole, as a society, man, we've kind of adopted this mentality of uh, mm-hmm. me first. Uh, I want to do what makes me happy, and I think that as long as we have that, do what makes you feel good, and I'm always looking out for me. Then it's hard for us to be in these kind of uh, codependent or interdependent relationships that kind of go back to this putting up somebody else above you or thinking of somebody else outside of yourself first. Okay, so you have all great strong, strong points, So, but I got to ask you one additional question. I'm going to let the ladies answer as well. So you uh, hit on a good point of, you know, making basically making sure that you're uh, happy, right? Like, you know, into before, like before putting others. Um, so make sure you're good before others. That's uh, I want to make sure I have that clear correct oh uh, I, I think that's the mindset that we're in now okay if yeah my happiness comes first and foremost that's the i think the, I, in a negative way in a negative sense i mm-hmm. think that's what we're very me first okay so and i think when you take that too far yeah so the question i mean what i'm gonna add on to that which is going to go to the earth point much more is you have people actually out there who do do the uh, what you're talking about and put others uh, first and making sure they're good, but at the same time, just being completely transparent to both sides. There's people who have done that and put themselves completely open and been betrayed, or like they put themselves completely open all, all their heart into a person, and that person leads to someone else. And I also heard stories where a person, like a man, uh, put all that he could into his wife. And he left himself miserable and only for the woman to leave. And now he is like, you know, down. So there's, uh, you have solid points, but I want to go ahead and make sure it's all well rounded, but you also have the other situation as well. So uh, what are your take on that? And then we'll go round back up to you, uh, Chris. About. Okay. There's uh, C.S. Lewis, he has a quote that I love, and he says that to love is to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm you would ever try to love, like, you run the risk of love, of love not giving it right back to you. And, like, that's what, what's, what's that old song? It's so good loving somebody. When somebody, when somebody loves you, loves you back. back. And that's, that's a fact. And that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's the truth. I mean, it's good yeah. loving somebody, but it's real good when that person loves you back. And I think that you run the risk of being vulnerable and of being hurt when you choose to love. But I think it's supposed to be that way. But I think what we have done now, because of all the many times that it's been abused, that you poured out your love to somebody and they didn't reciprocate it back to you. We found new ways of kind of getting all the things that we want without the hurt. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like without the risk anymore. Mm-hmm. So we'll settle for like situation or we'll kind of have these people where it's just like, well, I, I just, I'm just using them for blank and 
I, I'm keeping my heart far away from this. I'm just mm -hmm. using them physically. I'm gonna just use it for this, and I'm because I do not want to get hurt anymore. And that's why we have all these nuances, these new type of situations popping up. But I, I don't think there's a way that you can truly love without running the risk of being hurt. Exactly, and that's what it's all about. So let's let the ladies go. Go ahead, Val. I totally agree with Chris. I mean, I feel that that, and I was just going to say, you take a risk anytime we we take a risk with any relationship we have, um, with whether it's being a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the situation is, you take a risk of your heart be broken. Even as a parent, you run the risk of your children breaking your heart because they don't do what you ask them to do or they don't follow what you what you've taught them. So I think I think relationships in general are a risk, but it's like what Chris said, it's good when you take that risk and both parties take that risk, take that chance, mm -hmm. and you're able to come together and truly love each other. And I think that's the thing. Um, I was on a, a watching a, a Facebook group last night, and there are so many there are so many wounded people in general, and in, 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 but this focus was particularly on men, and it was really disheartening how many men had been in relationships with women, and I'm just going to throw this out there as an example, who couldn't apologize for being for making a mistake in the relationship or who treated them a certain way. And I'm just like, man, it's like, where are these, where are these guys meeting these young ladies that do not even don't value them and don't treat them decently? Well, unfortunately, you know, you have so many men that have, and women in general, and too, but you have a, a whole bunch of men that have been hurt and wounded. And so now, even if they want to love, their guard is up so bad to where they don't even, they, they, I've even had a young man tell me, he was just like, you know, I appreciate you healing me, helping him heal. And I'm like, okay, but I'm helping you heal. But meanwhile, I'm getting, you know, <laughs> I'm dogged out, but I'm glad, I'm glad I can help you. You know, so I just think as a society and community, it, it's, it's a risk. It's a chance. And love is, love is hard. It, it's hard. It's rough. All right. Great points. Go ahead. Miss Sam, Sam. <laughs> So, love is hard when you love in the wrong person. It's hard when you love the wrong person. And I think, I, I'm talking, and this is me, this is my life story. That when I, when I loved the wrong person, it was hard, you know. But when I loved that right person and that right person was loving me back, it wasn't hard. And I think, and I go back to say, to thy own self be true. You know, I think we're, we're in a place that, as um, Chris said, we're so selfish and we're self-centered. It's me, me, me. I want, I want, I want. But here's the deal. What I've discovered is that a relationship is not always about you it's about the other person so if i am pouring into the other person and the other person is pouring into me then we got it but i think a lot of time for me what i've done is i've always poured in to what what i wanted you know even though i knew in the back of my mind ah, that joke ain't right but but because i wanted love i desperately wanted love and I love the wrong person and so it was hard. Now you nobody gets to escape from um bruises in a relationship because that's the growing space. That's the growing mm -hmm. part of the relationship. I'm getting to know you, you getting to know me, we getting to know each other. We getting to figure out what works and what don't. So of course when you get to the point of where you are where you're the only one that's or being beat down by it then we don't, I don't leave. I stay and I stay and then I'm hurt. And so what happens is when it's over with, I got all these bruises. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm wounded. And so for a long time, I hopped into another relationship. But as I got older, I, I was like, no, nah, I can't do it to, I can't do it to my brothers because I believe black love still exists. So I don't, so I take the moments man let me let me get myself together 
So he won't get the butt of the wrath of what you know what somebody else did. But but goes back to the maturity part. When when are we gonna say, y'all? This is what I need. This is what I desire. You know, uh -huh. I I'm not gonna I'm we're not gonna have no entanglement. Okay, we're not gonna have no open relationship. I'm not gonna be in a poly. Do what you want to do. And if you do it, excuse yourself. And I'm gonna excuse myself. I'll see you. See you in H E V. You know, that's just it. <laughs> but it goes back to again to thy own self. Be true though. We got we have to learn to be in tr true to ourselves. And I think that is the biggest thing is that um we have to I think so so much things flow so much better when you are true to yourself. And mm -hmm. you are not true to yourself. That's when all the things start getting rocky and much more. Uh, so that is, I mean, we all had great. You and everybody in the discussion actually answered the question I was about to ask. So that's a tremendous amount of value. But before I ask the next question, Chris, is there something you want to add on to this before I uh, add an additional uh, question to the subject matter? Uh, back to that, to, to the original, I guess, topic. Like every meme or every kind of commentary about that red table, it always showed that uh that that they always showed that Will Smith was kind of over there looking like man, like he was ready to like choke her or like reach across that table. Yeah, he had to it look just like seemed a, like he was a hurt man. Yeah, he Yeah. <laughs> the <vibe is> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm listening to you just tear me up. And it's like I mean, I mean, for, for some of us guys, it's like, man, Will Smith was like, I mean, he ain't Denzel, but he was like every woman's crush, every young woman's crush. And it's like, dang, you know, <laughs> Will Smith getting cheated on? It's like, if Will Smith ain't enough, you know, it's like, man, women, what do y'all want? <laughs> so so, <laughs> so uh, that that's just one of the things that I thought, man. It's, and uh, I, I like what, what uh, Val said. There's a lot of wounded people out there. Uh, a lot of wounded people. Uh, Laverne said it good. Like before she even wanted to go into the next relationship, she wanted to kind of, I guess, want to fix herself, work on herself before she did it to another brother. And because, like, you don't want to take those, like, that, those hurts, those wounds, mm -hmm. and give them to somebody. And that's not even a person who hurt you. You mm -hmm. get back at somebody who long gone. And you go take it out on another person who never did anything to you. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a lot of wounded people on both sides, guys mm -hmm. and women, especially black men and black women. We are all, we have hurt one another. We wounded. Very strong point. So I'm done had to bring y'all back again for another one. But before, because I want to kind of keep these uh, lengths, because we are at a tremendous amount of value as it is. But I want to leave with this one that's going to have people like, oh, no, no, you can't. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to end it off of this one. So, sex can make and break relationships. Y'all thoughts, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got Byron, I'm going to let you start this one off. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, before I answer this, who are all going to uh, see this? <laughs> hey, it's, it's all. Let me, but let me, but, Okay, let me because I'm an open book. Does it make or break a relationship? It depends on how you enter that relationship. It 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 it, it really do. Um if I end if I enter a relationship and a couple of days and we just having sex, that's just what that's just what I'm expecting. You know, I'm expecting relationship, but when it ain't up to part no more, then it ain't, you know, then I'm looking like, you know, but if I enter a relationship and it's everything, you know, before that sex part, you know, because I, I mean, I'm an open book. Um, I believe in uh, abstaining from sex until you enter in, in a relationship. I believe to getting to really know a person before I enter into a relationship. And that's probably why I'm still single, but we, we all good in that, on that note. <laughs> but, yeah, but of course, of course, of course. When the expectation, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes. Yeah, gotcha, because gotcha. of my expectations. All right, go ahead about it. It's like the uh, fire, you know, last little round, go ahead. You know, I just think that, um, 
I think the expectation is that if you're in a relationship with someone and you are actually in a relationship, which again, we talked about where relationships are considered for some people. Um, what you define as a relationship is important and what you define you're doing is important because I think that that's the part that matters. I mean, if we're going into it like, okay, well, this is all it is, well, it's just, it's, it is what it is, it's just sex. But if we're saying relationship, a relationship, getting to know me, getting to know you, that's going to come before any of that. That's just, that's just my thoughts. That's going to come before that. You're not, we're just not going to enter into the, the sex realm and then be like, okay, well, what are we doing? Well, it's clear what we're doing. So I just think, um, I think it, again, it goes back to me. It goes back to what are you doing? The, you know, making it clear up front, this is what it is. Because I think that's when a lot of feelings get hurt and other things, issues come up because you don't know what you're doing and you have no idea where you're going. All right. Strong words, strong runners. All right, Chris, bring us home. Versus yeah. on you. <laughs> <laughs> Does sex make or break a relationship? Uh, it shouldn't, but the reality is that uh, I, I don't I don't know if it's if it sex makes a relationship. But uh, one of the things I think the order of it really can 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 derail it can really derail a relationship. Like I think the order to which things happen, like. This is Laverne, the order that you said, I got to be in a relationship before we have sex and things like that. That's not how it goes nowadays. Like, especially like with young adults and all this stuff. Sex come first. You meet somebody, sex come first. And then if it's good, then we try to keep having sex and then somehow work our way toward a relationship. And so you have people who like, well, I got to be physically attracted. I got to, you know, be stimulated and all this stuff like that. But then, so we, we, we start off with sex, and then if sex is good, then we keep on getting to know a person and then try to work our way toward a relationship. And then usually, if only thing y'all are good at is sex, then you'll kind of end up in these situationships where we still kind of <laughs> pleasing each other. But which, right, right. And we're trying to work toward, you know, communication we're trying to work on being emotionally connected we're trying to, and and that just throws off the whole entire order i mean we make sex i i think our generation especially single people we make sex to be such a huge thing we make it to be like 80 percent of a relationship when it's not i mean and we if you talk to a married person talk to married people like sex is not 50% of that marriage. I mean, you're going to spend more time just talking, laying around, chilling than you are in a bed, hot and sweaty. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> like you're going to spend more time getting to know all these minor details of a person than you are sweating on top of them just in a bed, hot and heavy. Like, that might be, if I'm being generous, that might be 15% of a marriage. And that's if I'm being generous. The other 85% of the marriage is doing non-sexual things. Uh-huh. All right. True. That's true. That's true. Love all the feedback. What can I say? But to Chris, like I said at the beginning, to thy own self be true. If, uh, you know what? On that, we're going to end it because that's exactly what I was about to get to. <laughs> <laughs> To our own. <laughs> <laughs> and true. Be true. Be true. Hey. So I want to go ahead and thank all the guests for being on. I have a feeling that they watch, I'm like, you need to bring them in and watch you just become the panel. <laughs> so, but hey, if it rolls like that, I ain't, I ain't complaining all that. So it's your host closing things out again on another episode of A Slice of Love. Make sure you leave the comment, subscribe, and much more. Let's keep the conversation going. Maybe the entanglement's not playing. It's a little joke. But we're going to keep the uh, communication going because that's how you learn. So peace and much love.